Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I wanted to talk about a little bit about Thomas Aquinas. I have been reading Augustine and Aquinas kind of side by side, a little bit of both, and I have been fascinated by Thomas Aquinas's view of freedom, of how the free will works. Because I think that we as Western minds, in modern times especially, the, the free will idea or the how the human will works, how freedom works, has evolved into a modern conception that would say that true freedom is the ability to choose between different things uncoerced by somebody else. So the example I've heard given is, you know, you're at a restaurant and you have the choice between a burger or fish or chicken. And uncoerced, you can pick one or the other. And it's totally up to you that that would be how most people would see freedom. But when you study Aquinas, that's not the way he defines freedom at all. He doesn't define it as our ability to choose between things. Rather, it is the ability to choose good. And his argument is that the human will is always going to do what it perceives as good. And so even in the example of somebody who does something horrible, like committing, committing suicide, that person in their mind is doing what they believe is good. It, this alternative is better than living. And so that, even as awful as it is, is considered good by the individual. And so this idea of us always doing what we perceive as good is just quite fascinating and a quite uh, fascinating take on what freedom is. And so Aquinas would argue that even freedom, if we have an end in mind, an end good in mind, we are going to take small, we're going to make small decisions that will build up to reach that end. And so it's not always a one decision to reach an end, but it's many decisions to reach one larger um, good or one larger end. And so this is the conception um, in that time period, in the medieval time period, the scholastic time period, that people would use to articulate the will. And Thomas Aquinas was one who did this quite well. And something I really like about it is, first of all, it's true. I sat and I thought for a long time, what are things that I have done in my life that I have not seen as good? And I can't think of a single one. And when I think about other people, I don't think there's a single person in the history of humanity that has ever done something that they have not perceived, at least in some sense, is good. And so what this means in reference to our salvation is ultimately the recognition that the ultimate good for a human, the ultimate good for man is to be in right relationship with our Creator, to be in right relationship with God Almighty. And this way has been afforded through Jesus Christ, who came, who took on flesh, who died on the cross, who was buried, and three days later rose from the dead, conquering the grave. And by faith, we can enter into this relationship with God, this rest restored union that was broken through the fall, and this is the ultimate good. And ultimately, Aquinas would argue that in the beatific vision, being glorified and being deified, coming into the presence of God, sharing in the divine nature, this is the ultimate state of freedom. And so the more one is able to do good, the more free that person becomes. So in eternity, a Thomas Aquinas would argue that in eternity, it's not as though our freedom is taken away, and that's why we do not sin. It's that because we are exposed to the greatest goodness ever imaginable, the very presence of God in perfect union with him, because of this reality, the only thing that our hearts will ever desire is God. There is going to be nothing that crosses our mind because we will be freed from the flesh. There will be nothing that crosses our mind that will be perceived by us to have a greater and higher goodness than God himself. Since God, in the words of divine simplicity, he's not made up of parts. God is good. He is goodness itself. And so, 
with that idea, I think it becomes clear that when the grace of God moves a person's heart towards him, takes out the heart of stone, replaces it with a heart of flesh, the ultimate reality that comes out of that is a free response to believe. And I know there are others, Reformed theology, uh, Augustinian tradition, that would also articulate this, that the, the human will is in bondage, Luther, the bondage of the will. The human will is in bondage to sin, and so it can only sin, and it can only do what is not pleasing in God's sight. But once God liberates the human will, then we do freely choose him. So I understand that this is not unique to Aquinas, but I think what is unique is the emphasis that we are always going to choose good. And I think one of the things people misunderstand about total depravity is they think in their mind that what we're saying is that humans can only do the worst possible things ever. And they look and they see morally upright atheists and they go, well, that's just not true. Clearly, men is not totally depraved. But what we're saying is that without the grace of God influencing us, without the grace of God moving us, compelling us, the things that we do, even morally good things, are not going to be things done in faith, and therefore they are going to be sinful. They are going to be for some sinful reason, self-righteous reason, other than to please God. And so it's this idea that as we seek for good, as we're looking for ways to elevate our sense of goodness in this life, when the grace of God moves us to open our eyes to the reality of his goodness being the pinnacle, our hearts are freely and naturally, without any coercion, without God forcing us, our hearts are freely and naturally based on the work of God, going to choose him. And as we struggle and battle with the flesh throughout the Christian life, the battle comes down to what do we perceive as good? Do we perceive the temporary fleeting pleasure of sin as good? Or do we see God and his promises as good? And this is the battle that we face as Christians. And the grace of God, beautifully enough, is sufficient to provide us a way of escape from various temptations. And the more that we are able to resist temptation and cling to the goodness of God, the grace of God, the promises of God, the higher our elevation of his goodness is going to become, and the more easily we are going to be able to say no to the sin and the temptation that comes into our lives. And this ultimately will lead in our sanctification to our final glorification, where we truly will become partakers of the divine nature, as Peter says. And to a very real extent, in Christ, spiritually raised in Christ, we are already partaking in the divine nature, with one day the consummate reality of that to look forward to. And when that day comes, the elevated sense of goodness is going to reach its climax, so that we can never ever desire or want anything besides God. Our natures will have been perfected. And, and what, is, what a beautiful thing it is to think about that. And I think the most beautiful thing about what Aquinas says is that our natures, not only are they going to be perfected, but our natures are going to be freed once for all. And I think sometimes we don't emphasize the word freedom enough in the life of human beings. God made us to be free. He made us to make capable moral decisions. He cognitively made us in his image. And so as image bearers, he has given us the ability to choose. He has given us the ability to seek after what is good and right. And by his grace, moving and transforming our lives, we are freely being conformed into the image of his son. And when that pinnacle comes, when we reach glorification, our wills are going to be free to have the greatest expression of human goodness that there is. And that goodness is an overflowing abundance of the grace of God in our lives so that we can share in his divine nature. And I find that to be beautiful. And so my challenge in this video really, first of all, is just to educate you on Aquinas and say, hey, if you haven't read some of his stuff, it's, it's pretty good. I'd recommend it. But secondly, I just want to encourage us to get away from the thinking that freedom is the ability to choose different options, chicken, burger, fish. Ra rather than, than looking at it that way, my encouragement is that we would look at it in the sense that Aquinas says, 
Freedom is the ability to choose good. And we cannot choose good apart from the grace of God. But when the grace of God moves us, compels us, regenerates us, we can freely choose good. And his grace is sufficient enough to keep that going up, 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 up until we are glorified and freed entirely from the bondage of the flesh and given the freedom to experience goodness at its pinnacle in the very essence of the goodness of God.